It's Rich and Jeff together again. Hey, you got it. It's Friday, January the 25th, 2019. Right. Remember, we don't have access to any injuries or any late-breaking stories after this date. Again, it's Friday, January the 25th. We're going to talk what about... What happen? They're going to be talking to the media all next week. Nothing's going to happen. Cocaine you know what? Trump. I remember Barrett Cocaine Robbins Trump. of the Raiders. I... I remember quite a oh, few yeah, guys, Jim Robinson. Robinson getting suspended. That was the drug problem. He, he was unstable. I actually, I actually met his nanny. His nanny said he was just complete out of control. He was supposedly manic depressive, but he was just on drugs and alcohol. He was Let me just say this. I know you've been pumping the Rams hard for a while now. A lot yeah. of people have questions about Todd Gurley. What's really going on, right? You're Apparently here acting. he's never really recovered because he would have played more if he wasn't hurt. He wasn't exactly yelling at Sean saying, put me in the damn game. So something, something's wrong with Todd Gurley. But he's not the most problematic offensive figure. The fourth, Do you best, think Stan the fourth best quarterback last Sunday is in the Super Bowl and he does not look like he's ready for the big limelight. Okay. I, I, I am no longer a believer in the Cal Bear that now resides in Los Angeles. Oh, all wow. It took, all it took was to watch him throw the ball basically into the ground and his coach, Sean McVay, practically ran the field and goes, what the hell are you doing? And he didn't have an answer for him. He just completely lost his voice. He looked like uh, Alex Smith used to look like in his early days, the 49ers. If the play wasn't working out, he would just roll to the right and just wing the ball 20 yards out of bounds, and then they would cut. It's just a complete surrender of a play. Wow. That's sounds not like... going to work in the Super Bowl. Brady's wow. gonna... I can't believe the line is two and a half. What's to discuss? I would bet my house on the Patriots covering two and a half points in this game. Wow. Okay. Okay. Let me just close this thought on Todd Gurley. If Gurley is hurt, then McVeigh and Stan Kroenke, the owner of the Rams, are looking at substantial fines, right? Substantial. Because, um, you know, the injury reporting requirements. In other words, I can't go into an NFC championship game with a guy who averaged 4.9 yards per carry in a regular season, have him be hurt and then not even have him listed, right? I Todd, Todd Gurley isn't, you know, Maybe nobody... Maybe he injured himself during warm-ups, Rich. It's always a possibility. Okay, okay, okay. This Todd Gurley crowd has a hard time sitting through a video, I can tell. But uh, we'll... <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say. Okay, 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 that's... Okay, I thought that was a drop the bike moment, but all right. Well, give me your thoughts on the Super Bowl. Tell me who wins and why, and talk about what they did to get to the Super Bowl. The games well, they just uh, played. Can we, can we review the greatest championship game weekend at all? Because I mean, we'll never see something like that again. And that could not okay. be beat. And, I, and then I will go into the Super Bowl, why, based on a lot that game. Okay. Those two games. I'll so say this. Off, first <laughs> Go off, ahead. the New Orleans Saints should be playing the Patriots. I think that's pretty clear to anyone who watched that game. That okay. one call, which is going to change the rule back, and in fact, it should now be mandatory to pass interference or a reviewable play. I mean, that was the most obvious pass interference that anyone who's seen a football game would know that. But more to that, there's like maybe three or four pass interference plays. And I don't know how many minutes of TV timeouts the NFL has at its disposal. But in a playoff game in the last couple minutes, the most, in a critical third down play, they should be, if the referee who saw that, he was 30 yards away, if he saw that with his own eyes, that's one thing. And he thought, well, the guy near us didn't call it. He was forced to look go under the hood and look at that play. He could not come out of that hood with a reasonable belief that he's going to get out of that stadium alive without saying, on further review, pass interference, first down Patriots. There's no way 
that could have been a non-call. That was a travesty, and I know the New Orleans fans were upset, and it was a great game, and the Rams played well, but with that penalty, and the Rams only having two timeouts, the Saints, who kicked the field goal from that same spot, would have knelt down twice, and then maybe a third time, they would run the clock down to five seconds left. Their field goal kicker, one of four field goal kickers who didn't miss a damn kick all, all Sunday last week, would have kicked the field goal, and the Saints would have won the NFC Championship. So, that, that, that's number one. The Rams played very well. Their defense is back up to speed. They have a good team. Their quarterback, there were three, the three top quarterbacks in the NFL played last weekend. And uh, Mr. Goff, I don't even know if he's a top wait, 10 quarterback. Wait a moment. Um, Aaron Rodgers played in one of those games? What, what? <laughs> no. Uh, you, could deb- you could honestly say that Brady, Mahomes, and Breeze could constitute the top three quarterbacks in the league. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, well, you're a prisoner of the of moment, player. Toss out of the equation. Which, which one isn't a top five talent, at least? Oh, I, oh, I got to tell you, give me Big Ben in January any day over Ooh. Pat Holmes. Ben Ooh. Roethlisberger. You remember him? Quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers, future Hall of Famer. Uh, did you, did, you, take watch, him, did I mean, you watch the game where Mahomes was going toe-to-toe? And making, with 37 seconds left, he drove his team to the 21-yard line. The travesty, with 11 seconds left, is that Reed didn't give him one more shot in the end zone. Because you've got to kill the Patriots when you can. They didn't need 11 seconds to set up a field goal to tie the game. Nor was he going to, he was going to gun the ball into the end zone, and they could have won the game right there. They could have won the game. I'll tell you what, before we discuss the KC game, though, I want you to finish your thoughts on the Ram Saint game. Sounds like you, I know you were uh, pretty aggressively on the Rams for a while. I thought you I was, would and they be taking well. a victory lap here. I'm, I'm surprised to hear you being so negative on it. Oh, them. well, the problem is it was a fantastic game. As we predicted, the score was right where we said it was bet the under. The Rams played well. But in the end, the Saints were in position to win. And I saw Goff look less than confident, not only in that play I referenced, he seemed, he was, play, he, he was playing not to lose. If you, if you play that way against the Patriots, you're going to lose. You have to be willing to take chances, which Mahomes did. I thought the Rams' defense did a tremendous job because Breeze was on target all day. You had mentioned maybe as a dead arm. He didn't look like he had a dead arm to oh. He I'm, played exceedingly well on Sunday. Okay, I'll say this. Um, I was privately hoping that the, uh, don't get me wrong, my recommendation last week was to take the Rams. Yeah. But I was hoping that the Saints would get to the Super Bowl because I do feel that Drew Brees has a dead arm, and I also feel that the Saints have problems in their passing game. This game, this game, Drew Brees has less than 250 net passing yards. In other words, Michael Thomas, he's a stud, but he's not an outside receiver. Uh, Brees, to me, can't get to the outside receivers. And um, I believe you saw them. Well, he can't get uh, to them when when there's a pass interference, when a guy is going head first. That ball was going to be a a pot for a first down. That was on the outside. That was like a 20-yard throw. That's a missed call, but I will it was say a good this. Throw, though. He was hitting Alvin Kamura, Kamura in stride. He was making all the throws that he needed to make. The de- okay. Rams defense, as we predicted, their defensive backs weren't giving him a lot of open looks, and he still made some plays. The defensive backfield prevented him from having greater yardage total. Mm-hmm. And it was a more conservative game. It was lower scoring than some of others games. I don't think getting 300 yards is, and or 250 only makes it a not, a not effective game. He made some really, his his first throw of the game, I believe, was a swing out pass that was re- reminiscent of the way Joe Montana would just lay the ball in stride to a receiver on the sideline. 
he, Drew Brees looked fine to me. Okay, I, you know, I think older players, apart from Brady, who's apart a phenomenon, from the age right? Wonder, Brady. Right. Um, most older players, they start the season looking great, physically fit, uh -huh. and then as the season goes along, that high mileage slows them down. And I'll just say this, must-win game, obviously, single elimination playoff game at home in New Orleans, where New Orleans was for some time, right? They had home field. They had right. won the prior game against the Eagles at home. Right. They can't put up 30 points? We said it would be a low-scoring game. No, I know, but let's just say this Saint offense wasn't wow. what it was in September and October. By now... People have looked at the film. Um, early on, you had Mark Ingram out. He was suspended. Then he comes in, and there's a new dynamic. By now, people knew exactly what to expect, exactly what to expect. I thought the Saints were sputtering. I didn't think the Saints were going to beat either KC or New England. I'm not uh, sure about that. I remember you saying Ingram wasn't going to be much of a factor. He and Kamara both played well. They both, Ingram had an impact on the game. I, I think the Rams' defense, as we thought, with the healthy cornerbacks, played one of their better games. The Rams' I'll say this. was much, much, much better than the first game they played. Right. And, and Dominican Sue is playing some b football right now. And but Aaron keep in Donald mind. Donald was, was his terrifying self. He was shedding guys and, and bothering Breeze often. But yet, they only sacked Breeze twice. But, but they disrupted the timing of the plays, which maybe led to some incompletions that prevented him from getting your magical... So maybe Breeze didn't look that good. Maybe he got a bit disrupted. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying much like Andrew Luck the week before, if you're under pressure, you're going to have to get rid of the ball before you win. Okay. Let me say this about the Rams, too. Uh, yeah. They clearly are not the team they were in September and October, uh, right? Definitely they're not because Gurley's hurt, and I think their quarterback isn't playing at his – he made some good plays. He, he didn't lose the game or, or cause them to be in a position to lose. He just – I'm not sure if, – if he falls behind, I, I'm not sure they're going to be able to catch up. Now, they did fall behind, right. and they did lead a comeback, but – in a Super Bowl where Brady typically, the Patriots typically score 30 plus points, if they fall too far behind, I think even if they can start moving the ball, the Patriots will keep moving the ball and scoring. They're going to try to outscore the Rams this game, I believe. Wow. Okay. I, I think the Cooper Cup injury changed right. Jared Goff's season. I think Perhaps. Cup up to him was really his um, Kittle, perhaps. Kittle for the 49ers Edelman or the uh, Travis Kelsey for KC. Edelman for the Patriots. Edelman for the Patriots. That's exactly right. And so, you know, looking at that game, I'm not a big believer in any young quarterback in right. the Super Bowl. I understand Russell Wilson won that first Super Bowl over Peyton Manning. He had a great defense. He had a great defense. He had some other playmakers playing in the game. Plus, Peyton Manning was a shell of himself. That oh. game was outdoors in the Northeast. You remember that? Yeah. Oh. A little bit of wind. The first, the first snap sailed over Peyton Manning's head for safety. That, that, that was like the beginning of the end right there. That was a disaster for the Broncos. That was a disaster. Well, let me say this. I think the stage here is too big for Goff. I like the yeah. Patriots in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, the two and a half, I would lay the two and a half. But let me say this to the viewers. The viewers. Both of us recommended futures in the past. Yeah. You, should be, you should be well in the black. The futures last week on the Patriots and the Rams were both right. over plus 300, right? Yeah. You should be well in the black. Take your right. winnings. Don't risk it all, right? Make sure you structure the bet so you win. You're well in the black if you followed our advice Right, you don't even have to touch the game to make a profit. You basically hedge, you could just hedge the Rams' futures if you believe the Patriots are going to win, right? Is that what you're thinking? You know, I'm just, um, I have money on both teams. So at this right. stage, I'm thinking about 
betting on prop bets, <laughs> you know, maybe wow. fooling around with the live betting during the event if I see oh, an opportunity, yeah. right? But at this stage, I'm really hesitant to throw even more money out there. I do think, though, the game's a mismatch in part because of the Patriots' dominance, and that's the word to use, the dominance over KC. Let me say this, too. Interesting play in that game, the D Ford offsides play, right? I know there are a lot of Chief fans right now who are saying, hey, we should have won this game. No question about it. But let me just say you were dominated in the game. Football is a fluky game where because of turnovers, one team could dominate the other and still have the game be competitive. Now, just thinking about the idea that the final score doesn't accurately reflect which team was dominant, let me just point out that New England had twice as many first downs. Right. Think about it. In a game in KC as the Chiefs, 36 to 18. Do you know why they had that? Do you know why they had so many first downs? Because, the and I'm serious. play Mahomes ran, like 25 yards a play? You know, let first. me say this. So they uh, just Pat need Mahomes. to get first down. I mean, you thought the spotlight would be too big for Mahomes. Both oh, it was. He, he he played fearlessly. He if he had won, it wouldn't have surprised me because he played a fantastic. The fourth quarter was probably it's a highlight reel for young quarterbacks about what you can do in a fourth quarter. He he single handedly lifted that team on his back right to the edge of beating the Patriots. Let me say this: um, Pat Mahomes should win the MVP this year. Yeah. Uh, I'm not 50 touchdowns. Too. That's huge. I'm not here saying that Pat Mahomes might not make the Hall of Fame. In other words, he's right. starting his career in spectacular form, right? First year starter, second year player, first year starter wins the MVP. That's spectacular. But understand, you don't fully appreciate what he left on the field. In other words, what, what did he leave on the, the field? His cape? I well, mean, well, let me just say this. One more time, there's a reason the the uh, Patriots don't go for field goals. They they thought touchdown the whole time. People you know, said, I, oh, the coin flip decided it. What if Kansas City got the ball back? If they you know, had settled for a field goal, the Patriots would have scored a touchdown in the next possession. They would have. They still would have. Unless Reed was willing to go for a touchdown, the first possession of overtime, Kansas City was going to lose that game. You know, I'll say this. I encourage everyone here to listen to Greg Cosell's analysis. Oh, I listen to that all the time. Excellent. Of the first half. Understand that Belichick, in his infinite wisdom, was single covering Travis Kelsey, Pro right. Bowl tight end. Right. Single covering him with a young player, either a rookie or a second-year player. Right. Now, Pat Mahomes, Greg Cosell believes, didn't sense... The matchup. Cosell believes Mahomes is so green, so green, that Mahomes just assumed that they were going to double cover Travis Kelsey. Now, I'm just telling you, a quarterback like some of the guys you hate, Ben Roethlisberger, Aaron Rodgers. I, I didn't say I just wanted what if, Well, <laughs> you have Pat Mahomes ranked ahead of these guys. I do. I don't I, think Vets make that Brady mistake. Brady retires, Patrick Mahomes is going to be the best quarterback in the NFL. But unfortunately for him, Brady's going to stay around another three, five, ten years. God knows how long Brady's going to. You have to put a stake through his heart to kill him, apparently. Yeah, he looks okay. like he was 30 years old. You know, he sat there on the bench, shivering in the cold, and he came on the field, and that, that game-winning drive, he was throwing darts into a six-inch window that only Gronk or Edelman could catch. The guy just... The last drive was impressive quarterbacking. He, he was on with. target every throw. There was no way to stop it. There, only his guy could get to the ball. It was a textbook. And, and he had just done the drive at the end of the fourth quarter, leaving only 37 seconds left. And yet Mahomes drove his team down to where they could have had another shot at the end zone. Yeah, no. Um, you know, Mahomes in the second half, I can't give him anything in the first half. In the second half, it doesn't matter Mahomes, because the game was there to he got them back in the position to win the game. 
Okay. There's well, lots of great players who have bad first halves. They 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 they're known for their comebacks. This number sixteen in San Francisco would often have not his best. Like that Bengals, the second Bengals 49er Super Bowl in Miami in 1989. It was three to three at halftime. It was the most boring first half of football. And it wasn't a high scoring game. And yet Jerry Rice had 280 something yards receiving that game. I mean, I'll say this getting, getting back to this game, I think the stat of this game that should have everyone understand who the best team in football is. Uh is the time of possession, right? Understand the Patriots on the road in cold weather conditions in Kansas City against the one seed had the ball more than 20 more minutes than the Kansas City Chiefs. It doesn't take Kansas City very long to score a touchdown. I don't know if you watched the fourth quarter. Well, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing performance. Especially those last 37 seconds when it looked like uh, Brady did it again. Mahomes had him at the, at the Patriots' 21-yard line with like 18 seconds to go. They ran one play and kicked a field goal. That was a mistake. Well, that's one, of the, the game. that's one of the reasons why Andy Reid doesn't have any rings on his hand, right? Let me also say, too, in terms of total yardage, the Patriots had well north of 200 more total yards than Kansas City, right? Even if you take out the overtime yardage, the Patriots still had well over 100 more yards than Kansas City. They had Um, six more points than Kansas City. Well, you know, that's because Tom Brady... That was You know, turnovers... Turnovers this quarter... The game was tied and Kansas City was right there. I mean, you could... I, I don't care about stats. I care about watching the game and seeing... And... A young player, his first year playing, MVP season, regular season, an uneven first playoff game, but they were well ahead. And then and almost anyone else, that would be the game of their life if they could play that well. I mean, I, I am totally on board with Pat Mahomes. I think he's, I think he's just going to get better next year. I think the Chiefs are going to be, you're going to have to reckon with the Chiefs for the next four or five years. Unless he gets hurt, because he is far and away, he's like um, Aaron Rodgers 4.0. The guy has can make any throw, and he's he didn't have to sit for three years behind Brett Favre. He is already at a Rodgers level of just I'm going to make this throw, and half the time the pass is incomplete. It bounces out of his his teammate's hand. The guy has made. A dozen, two dozen unbelievable throws in these last two games. It's, it's, it's remarkable to watch him play football. He is really talented. And he's confident. He's not like Jared Goff, oh, I'm going to throw the ball all the way. He knows that you don't get these games all the time. He wasn't worried about losing the game, much like Brady played. He was playing to win. He was willing to do whatever, whatever risk needed to be taken, whatever throw needed to be made. He never flinched. He made amazing plays. And he's got a great supporting cast of talented players. Really. And yeah. he's got a good coach. You know, I'll say this. Um, if this were an NFL draft, I'd be interested in Pat Mahomes. Yeah. But this is, but this is really handicapping a Super Bowl and handicapping playoffs, right? There's, there's a reason why. KC lost. Part of it is Mahomes' playing style and his age, right? The first half was too big for him. He uh, couldn't well, but, exploit... But he made up for that, though, Rich. I mean, he was right there in the second half. I'm not sure who else besides Tom Brady would have beat him last Sunday. Brady rose to the peak level of Brady to win that game. Right. Understand, though, Mahomes didn't cover the point spread. <laughs> Mahomes didn't well, win the he game. He had to win the game to cover the point spread. He tried to win the game. Right. I'll say this, too. Life's not linear. In other words, years ago, a guy named Aaron Rodgers won his first Super Bowl. He was right. a young guy, and we all but, thought, oh, uh, wow, this could be the start second. of a brain. He wasn't in his second year. He didn't even play till his fourth year. 
No, I know, but he was a young guy, and we all thought that this guy would be getting more rings. Dan Marino, he was a second-year player, yeah, right? Dan Marino out, passed for 5,084 yards. Dan wasn't back to the Super Bowl ever. Pat yeah, Mahomes Marino, has competition Marino in the AFC. Marino got destroyed by the 49ers. Mahomes didn't get destroyed by the Patriots. There's a difference. Well, Marino, I'll just Marino, say— Marino, The 49ers completely shut down Marino in that Super Bowl after the— first quarter and a half, but the, the 49er defense stopped him and his mark Duford he ended up with 300 him. passing yards, just food for thought. Yeah, but look at the final score. They lost by like 22 points. No, no, right. They right. got shut, their, their mark twins got shut down by Eric Wright and Ronnie Lott. That, that game was, that, that ended the debate that Marino was the ascendant great one and Montana was just another great quarterback. After that game, no one ever thought Marino was better than Montana. For yeah. Him. All I'm saying, though, is look at the AFC, right? right. Phillip Rivers has a supporting cast that can rival any team. Uh, Frank Reich with Andrew Luck, him. after their debut year together, he got big things can happen. Rivers got destroyed. He fell behind and got destroyed. Mahomes fell behind. And... But they scored three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. I mean, I, if, you, if, if you're down and having a bad day, it's pretty easy to think, oh, I just don't got it. I can't do it. He never thought he was going to lose the game. And he, even after the game, he, he didn't look beaten. He looked like, wow, I wish we, I had the ball one more time. Brady's really good. He wasn't thinking, oh, I can't play. This was too big a moment for him. He's thinking... I can't wait for training camp to start because I want to win next year. So, for the gamblers out there, if you're betting futures on the AFC right now, I would KC's for next KC's. year, KC's your top pick. Is that right? Oh, KC is loaded. They, and, and the great thing about losing a championship game as opposed to losing the Super Bowl, Super Bowl losers tend to kind of end up like the Eagles. Mm -hmm. AFC or NFC championship game losers are often back in that game the next year and often make that next step. So I, Kansas City, I think, would be a great choice. I think the Saints might be a good choice as well because I think Breeze, he, <laughs> he looks relatively healthy to me. I'm not sure where you're getting your dead arm information. He's got a good young team around him, and I think he's – I'm sure he'll be playing well again next year. The Saints are a good team. But there's other good teams out there, too. As we talked about earlier in one of our broadcasts, the Colts are up and coming. Uh, who else has been? I don't know. The Chargers have a talented team. By the way, in, in the Chiefs division, along yeah. with Vic Fangio's Denver Broncos, right. right? In other words, the Chiefs don't have the cakewalk to win the division. That, let's say... The Patriots have, right? Because Adam no, Gase well, is no longer in Miami. Jets have a new head cakewalk. coach. Huh? No, okay. and the Patriots have had cakewalk for the last decade in their division, at least. Okay, well. But, but Kansas City had that this year. The Chargers were there with them all year, and Kansas City outlasted them, and they were ready for the playoffs. I don't, I don't think that – I don't think Denver's going to be winning – 11 or 12 games next year. I don't think they have a complete team. Like, obviously Kansas City and probably the Chargers. I don't think the Chargers are going to like, oh, well, it's over now. I th and they're also, uh, is the new stadium in L.A. next year or the year after that? I thought it was the year after, but I could be wrong. So I guess another year in the soccer stadium with a lot of opposing fans. So the Chargers are, will again be a road warrior team. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. Let's segue to the Super Bowl. Yeah, you mentioned you mentioned earlier that you feel New England is going to win. Give us it's, why. It's simply Brady, the Brady differential, and over Goff is too much, especially for a two and a half point line. The only thing that could derail Brady would be Do um, Donald and Sue getting a lot of pressure up the middle, which is possible. But even then, with an, an iffy Todd Gurley and I would say kind of sh not fully confident Goff, I, 
I, I don't think the Rams' offense is going to be able to keep up. Even if the even if the Patriots fell behind by ten or fourteen points, I think they could easily pull a Falcon type comeback on the. And I don't think the Rams will be that far ahead, even if they get the lead. I just think Brady is playing probably as well as he has in the last three years. Gronk is healthy. Edelman is like Fred Bolitnikov. Their offensive line, the running game is good, and their defense is playing the best. They seem like an NBA team that has waited through the regular season for the playoffs to start, and now they're peaking. They're playing as well as they have all year. The Rams have two critical question marks on offense. And even with a good defense, uh, the Patriots are still going to be able to outscore the Rams. So I think it's a no-brainer. I would Let me ask you. Um, I, I know one of the like questions. A, a 34 to 24 type game. And that's on the low side. The game could be higher scoring. But I think the Rams' defense is pretty good. I'm just afraid Goff, after being lectured for two weeks about not throwing the ball away, is pretty prone without Gurley to maybe making some throws you may wish he had back in the Patriots getting. If you give Tom Brady and his offense a couple short fields, that's almost certainly 10, if not 14 points that you've just given away. So yeah, I, just, I, I, think... I just see this as a 10 point. Yeah, I, I, the line should be a touchdown. Two and a half points is, is like giving money away, in my opinion. Well, well, let me ask you, how do you justify that when the Patriots weren't even favored against Kansas City? Right, I Patriots. By, by the fact that they went on the road and had a tremendous offensive performance in suboptimal weather conditions, and their defense is on an upward trajectory, whereas the Rams' offense, without a healthy Gurley, is more limited, and Belichick, with two weeks, can really focus on making. Goff so uncomfortable, he's either going to throw the ball away or under the pressure of being like, you've got to make some plays, trying to force the ball in that the Patriots are going to see coming and take it the other way. I think he's, he's just not confident enough. If he makes a couple of mistakes, then look out. I mean, this could be a route. I mean, he may just not be able to recover from a couple of mistakes because his natural tendency looks to me like he wants to make the right play and he wants to throw the ball away. I don't think the Rams can afford to play that way. The Patriots are going to go for as many points as possible to get a big lead in the first half, and then Goff is going to be in a, in a position where he doesn't have the demeanor at this point of his career without a healthy Todd Gurley to really lead a, a big comeback against a defense that's, that's on the upswing. In a Super Bowl where the Patriots have played so many times, they've got so much experience. The Rams defense is going to have to be on the order of the 2000 Baltimore Ravens to slow down this Patriot train. And as good as they are, they're not that good. And I, without a healthy Gurley, I think the Rams are playing with one hand behind their back. Yeah. Um, I'll say this Gurley actually looked decent against the Cowboys. Oh, right? yeah. And the Ram, the Ram offensive line actually manhandled the left side of the Cowboy yeah. defensive front. Um, but he's clearly not healthy. And this, these kind of injuries where he was out for a long time, he comes back. And whatever he did, he had to have re-injured himself. He's not going to be well in two weeks. It took him, how many, five or six weeks to, to get ready to play the Rams? He's not going to be healthy for Super Bowl Sunday. It doesn't matter what they say in the injury reports. He would have played twice as many plays against the Saints if he was healthy. That's the only possible explanation. Okay, you said that the Rams had two big deficiencies on offense. Goff, I take it Goff's Early was one of them. Goff's the Goff's other one? Goff's confidence isn't where it needs to be for this game against Brady. You have to have an unalterable belief that you can – hold your own against the opposing quarterback. And I, I just don't see it. Brady's at the top of his game and Goff is right. his own coach is questioning him. That's not that's not a good situation for a young quarterback. Right. I'll say last year's Super Bowl, Nick Foles is fearless and throws yeah. deep. Right. He's fearless. 
And that's right. That's the well. personality type. Right. right. Goff is a guy who strikes me as a little bit more sensitive. He's very who, sensitive, and he wants to please people. He doesn't want to make a mistake. Not a swashbuckler. You have to be a <laughs> right. you have to be a cold blooded killer because if you're afraid of making a mistake, you're not going to make the big play. I don't think Aaron Rodgers has ever been afraid of making a mistake. Brady, because he is so prepared, doesn't even consider a mistake. The mistakes that, I guess, from interceptions, it's usually a tipped ball. It's something unusual. Brady doesn't... He was brilliant on that overtime drive last week. Brilliant. The the throws were just out of the reach of the defender, I thought. Exactly. Right. He was was hot then, right. And he was deliberate, and he was decisive. And that's how he wins, and he's playing like the... You can't even say the old Tom Brady. He's playing right. like the ageless Tom Brady that he's become. And I think, um, I believe casual fans yeah. look at C.J. Anderson and Todd Gurley and think that the Rams have the edge in the rushing attack, right? Not with a, um, even with a healthy Todd Gurley, you were right about the Patriots rushing attack. Oh, my that's God. Just, Over 170 that, that's yards. That's defense off balance all game long. James and, White, Rex Burkhead... And, and uh, even even when the, even when the Chiefs so were Michelle. hoping, when they were hoping to stop the Patriots at the end, they just ran it right down their throat. Right oh, down. Burkhead between the tackles. Oh, yeah. I'm curious to see if he can pull that off against the Rams, but they don't even need him between the tackles because right. you have Sony Michelle on the outside and James right. White on the outside, and I believe that's the secret to the Patriots. They don't have stars. They don't have the Todd Gurley. But they have committees that outproduce right. Gurley and his right. staff. You understand right. what I'm saying? And so they have a superior rushing game to me. They definitely have a superior quarterback. Yeah. With all due Mc- respect to McVay, second year head coach, he's not in Belichick's league. You know, well, and you know what? right now he's I think, not. I think that's part of uh, Goff's problem, actually. Let me just say this when you rely on a system. And it's the play calling and the play design, much like Andy Reid, except Mahomes is more physically gifted than God. You know, that's not going to work in these big games where everyone's paying attention. Right. You read, the Patriots have seen everything. The Patriots' offense isn't that complex. They have guys, they basically, because they turn over personnel, my guess is that Gronk and Edelman they just know where they're supposed to get after about one and a half seconds or two seconds. <laughs> right. How they get there right. is meaningless. Right. So they're going to do right. their double move. Agree. But Agree. Brady knows exactly where they're going to be, and the defense, if he's trying to shadow them, he's going to be behind, and Brady's going to put the ball where they can catch it. Goff is waiting for McVay's magical play call and the misdirection, and the Patriots aren't falling for the misdirection. That's actually how you beat the Patriots. They love to run all this crap, but they have very basic patterns. Agreed. That's why, that's why the Agreed. defense can, can, can match up with them, because they have enough talent to play man-to-man. I wouldn't play zone at all. I would match up man-to-man if I were the Rams and say, we're going to make, we're going for the ball, because we know if we can step in and get interceptions, that'll take the pressure off Goff, and maybe he can just go with his more conservative style. The D- Rams defense, the Rams' only hope is the defense can turn the ball over three or four times against the Patriots. And the only way they can do that with Brady, who's so smart, is to be so ultra-aggressive, have Donald and Sue go up the middle and have the cornerbacks and safeties playing man-to-man and trying to make plays against Gronk and Elliman and whoever else they're going to throw the ball. Oh, so that's, that's let me, let me to say, too, I want people to revisit that KC tape. You're going to notice several times Brady gets to the line of scrimmage, then he touches his helmet. He's calling audibles, and Tony Romo was with him. In other words, Romo saw exactly what Brady saw. And all I'm saying is veteran quarterbacks, and I know you disagree with me on this, but veteran quarterbacks have such a huge advantage. Huge advantage, and I don't think Goff is going to be as aware as Tom Brady. I think Tom Brady 
probably gives his team a seven to ten point advantage. That's <laughs> why I think the line's so far off in this one. Right, 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 right. Because Goff is entirely reliant on Sean McVay's play calling. Brady, as much credit as he gives Josh McDaniels, doesn't Takes even it. need an offensive coordinator. He doesn't even need a play call from the bench. He can go up the line and figure out what play to call because he knows all the plays they've run the last 15 years. Right, and the other guys have Super Bowl and postseason experience, so and, they're and prepared. I, Nobody's I, jumping off sides in a neutral zone, right? right? I, I think the Patriots players, their plays are easy enough to call. They probably change terminology, but I think they have route trees for receivers. They have blocking assignments. Their plays probably are calling out A, C, <laughs> right. 1, and Agreed. 5. Each player group knows what to do on that play. It doesn't even matter the play. They don't even know, need to know what the other guys are doing. Brady knows where everyone's going to be. Right. Walk your man. Run this route. Running back. We just we signed you. You were a car wash two weeks ago. Run. This is what I want you to do. I want you to run a flare out. If if the main play doesn't work, I want to know where you're going to be. That's all you have to do. Flare out to the right about five yards and just stand there. And it, as a last resort, I'm going to dump the ball off. That's oh. how they can get these guys off the street to play well, because they're not learning a whole playbook. They're learning, here, you have five things you're going to do. You're going to block, you're going to take a fake handoff, you're going to do an inside run, an outside run, and you're going to run a flare. I think That's your entire right. job. I think, I think that's how the Cowboys with right. Jimmy Johnson yes. were so successful with that young a team. You remember they were right. the youngest team in the league and they were winning Super Bowls because... And Sean McVay is doing the exact opposite. I'm going to give you the most complex right. set of assignments and the quarterback who has to try to know everyone's assignment doesn't is trying to remember the play and he doesn't have the confidence, especially against the Patriots who will disguise their coverage. He's going to be afraid to audible because he's not going to know what to do and right. he's waiting for mcveigh talk to me sean and then he's going to throw the ball away and mcveigh's going to go what the hell are you doing and meanwhile brady will just be sitting on the sideline thinking about where he's going to go on vacation with giselle and then he's going to focus into his hyper focus he's going to drive his team it's going to be brady against the rams defense that's the game and right and i don't this... think the rams defense can beat him well enough or by enough, they would have to have the game. They would have to have four or five guys at the game, like Aaron Donald, and Sue, the cornerbacks, and maybe one of the safeties has to play the, the best lead, game right. of their life. And this is not—you don't get five guys who play the best game in their life in one game. That's just I'll say this too: uh, Brandon Cooks, former Patriot, right. uh, keeps the lead, former Patriot. Right. Um, I believe Belichick is going to know how to take Brandon Cooks, their top wide receiving weapon right now, right. out of the game. Because well, he's he'll basically... Double cover, he'll double cover whatever he thinks the main option is going to be. He'll force Goff to go off the main primary receiver. And Goff, Goff by the time he gets there, he's going to telegraph his passes. It's going to lead to turnovers. I think the Rams will turn the ball over. Well, the Patriots would have to turn over three or four times for the Rams to win. I think Goff will have three interceptions, two of which are because he's trying to come back from a deficit that he's never going to come back from. It's not going to be a pretty game for Goff. One of them because he's young. <laughs> you know, I'm just telling but, you. But two, right. just desperation where he's forcing the ball, where he's not comfortable doing that. And the Patriots will just be watching his eyes in the second half. He's going to telegraph where he's going with the ball. And it's I'll say, too, whatever's going on with Todd Gurley, because Gurley's actually a great pass catcher. Gurley oh, yeah. would be it's Gurley would be the team. obvious safety valve for him. It, it must be something that it could maybe a lower back injury, something that's making him uncomfortable to run. It doesn't look like he's limping around. I think it's like a back injury where – he just can't get comfortable and lower himself and make the plays. And if he gets right. hit the wrong spot, he's probably got a stinger. It's just something that's – he just he probably wouldn't play for a month if it was a regular season. That's, that's how off he is right now. I'm sure he's going to try to play. Boy, I bet he was wishing he was playing on grass. No one wants to play on AstroTurf with a bad back or something that's really bothering me. That's just pain. Yeah. Hit or hitting the ground. It's just – he, he – 
he's not going to be able to be Todd Gurley that we've seen the last couple of years. That's too bad. Do you think the Rams will have an advantage because they just played a game indoors and the Super Bowl's indoors? No, because the Patriots play AstroTurf all the time. The Rams, the Rams are a grass team. Uh, they, they would they would have a big advantage if they could play like in the Rose Bowl somewhere outside and warm, which is far different than the weather the Patriots have been dealing with since October. The Rams would do well at home yeah, on grass. And so they have, they're at a disadvantage playing in a dome. The Eastern mm-hmm. time. This all lines up. It's, it's pretty, after the great playoff games we've had, I'm not looking forward to the Super Bowl as far as a competitive game. It, something, obviously, if Brady gets hurt, obviously, if for some reason... Turnovers. 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 The only fumbles. The fumbles wow. and free, and weird plays. But it's the, the Patriots don't get rattled. They could be down right. 21 points and they'll still be think they're going to win for sure. Oh, the they just side, played. The Rams have a bad start. This game will be over. Maroon 5 will still be playing and, and the fans will be like drinking, thinking, oh man, this, this game's a bummer. Right, you know, and it's interesting, too, because we were talking about Ingram and Joey Bosa two weeks oh, ago, yeah. and yeah. then, um, you know, the Chiefs, even though their defense is suspect, they have one of the league's premier pass rushers, uh, yeah. pass rushing attacks, and Brady's offensive line is playing their best football of the season. Brady yeah, hardly gets touched. The pocket the pocket is, was perfectly formed. Brady. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I mean, he the was, entire game. Well, right. And the other thing is Brady never holds the ball more than two seconds. I mean, right. If you get a free blitz, you're not going to get to him before he gets, he, he throws the ball immediately. That's, I think Donald gets taken out of the game. Right. I think, I think Donald and Sue, who only got two sacks against right. Breeze, get taken out of the game. So, you know. All Do right. So to sum up a, here. They have that shot blocking tall guy. He knocked down like five luck passes. He knocked down a couple of Brady passes. That doesn't even phase Brady. He just goes to the next play. But that's an effective way to stop him. He's going to throw it over the middle a lot. So if you right. get the paw up there, if Donald and Sue can knock down a bunch of passes, that could lead to a couple three and outs. And then maybe a punt return. Some special play team would really help the Rams out a lot. A kick return a block punt, something. They need any kind of thing to take the pressure off Goff so he can just play a more conservative game and just not. That's what he wants to do. He doesn't want to be the hero. He doesn't want to be the guy who loses the game. That's his mentality. Okay, so I see we've gone almost 48 minutes. The view from both of these seats, Patriots cover. (laughs) Yeah, I don't even know over-under. In this game, that's impossible. This game could be like... uh, 90 points could be scored. Right, right. On could the be. opposite side, maybe less than 50, but that seems doubtful. I don't know what the over-under is, but it's, unless it's like 65. Even 65, I would probably think the over has a good chance of winning. I wouldn't even t- want to touch over-under. I'm, I'm hesitant on the over-under simply because the Patriots have such a great rushing attack. Right. You know what I mean? And so yeah, they, even they, if they, they jumped be, out to a lead... They, they could they run the football run the and drain clock. They don't, they don't need to score 50 points. They don't care about that. They just want to win. So yeah. they'll, they'll just run the clock out. They have to. Okay, I'll tell you what. Next week, you and I are going to have to talk basketball and baseball and some other sports. <laughs> oh, I, I want to have one plug here before we sign off. Okay, Three go for it. Outpost, which is my one-man newspaper, is having, for the month of February, starting next Thursday, a 16-team bracket, like the NCAA basketball tournament, the duets, the 16 greatest duets of all time. There's four regions, your region, you, would you would like, the East Coast regions, primarily New York-based people like Neil Diamond, Barbara Streisand, Lady Gaga, Jay-Z, and Alicia Keys. I thought this was basketball. Mm-hmm. No, it's, <laughs> it's a basketball-like tournament. Oh, gotcha. Okay. The, the 16 videos are there. If you go FremontOutpost.com, the That's Entertainment section, you'll see it. Perfect timing as we wait for March Madness 
as soon as the Super Bowl ends, we've got a month of nothing. So this will give people something to do before Valentine's Day. You could also spend some time with your wife or girlfriend in the dead time that is February. Okay, and then you, you get know, right it, back into March. But then March, yes, March, and then the NBA started in April. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Okay, any, any last words here? I see we're That's up on it. 50 minutes. Okay. Hey, everyone, just remember my advice. If you're in the money already, just stay there. Just stand pat. If you have to bet on this game, Jeff and I like the Patriots. We're expecting them to win and cover the two and a half points. Exactly. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks, Rich. Thanks, viewers. <laughs> Thanks, loyal viewers. All righty. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.